Warning, the following podcast features views and opinions that are likely to trigger the extreme fanboys and fangirls who disagree with them. Listener discretion is advised. Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. Matrix Reloaded just flew in the face of that. (laughs) (laughs) Because today we are talking about 2003's The Matrix Reloaded, but we're also going to you can't not talk about Matrix Revolutions if you talk about Reloaded. So let's just call it The Matrix sequels. And of course, I had to bring back my Wachowski sibling partner because you did Speed Racer with me. Mr. Yeah, Joe Stein. yeah, I got I to gotta come back and talk about these two movies that I remember very little about. Well, the reason you so I wanted to do this one with you. <laughs> uh, and the reason why is because I even asked you, you're like, I think I saw it once. And I saw I was this like, once. Yeah. Perfect. Because you famously saw the first Matrix between twenty and thirty times <laughs> in theaters, in the theater. like insane. Like this I loved was, it so much. This was a uh, like maybe a month before like Phantom Menace came out. So uh-huh. I remember there it was like that movie that everyone's like, "Fine, I'll go see it." It was kind of like the Iron Man to the Dark Knight, where people were like, "All right, I'll go see this and, and just wait until the one I really yeah. want to see." Comes and then out. it was like, "Oh, right, holy." <laughs> Um, yeah, I saw this. Now, probably half of those were like the dollar theater. Still. Because that became like every day would be like, do you want to go to Wendy's and then watch The Matrix again? <laughs> yeah. Um, but still, I, yeah, I saw I saw this. I saw The Matrix so many times. It hit on so many dumb levels for me, like the action, the look of it. Like, because at that point, like all I there was a big part of me that like all I wanted to do was listen to Prodigy and like. <laughs> Uh, wear black pleather shirts <laughs> and like that's all I wanted um, but yeah just the whole uh, the world's not real thing and then um, I don't know if a lot of people think this way but you know how you always have like the, the duels like there's Dante's Peak and Volcano sure, yeah. and Armageddon Deep Impact this also came out close to Truman Show and Dark City, which yeah. are thematically very similar. And then 13th Floor came out, which like tried to be like, we're Matrix 2. You're like, See? no, you're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, even just thematically, like everything's like kind of screwed up around you. Right. Like when you're, uh, this was 99? Yes. So I was 17, yeah. maybe, like 16, 17 years old. Um, like that stuff's just like catnip for like a kid that's like kind of weird and like trying to figure it out. So it was right. like, what are all these movies trying to tell me, man? Like, why are they all coming out now? Yeah, so, there was yeah, definitely was something interesting because Truman Show was 98 and mm-hmm. then this was 99. But it also asked a very basic question of what is reality? Mm-hmm. And both films kind of delved into the to this idea that reality is really only what you perceive it to be. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Unlike most movies that we talk about on this show, I like to give a little bit of context because usually sometimes, you know, with a movie like Dark Phoenix or a movie uh, like Justice League, the context informs everything about that movie. Mm -hmm. This movie's pretty straightforward. The Matrix was a huge hit. So you do another one. Yep. Uh, now, this wasn't as popular at the time. I think at that time, you know, like Lord of the Rings was in production and they did, you know, all three at the same time. But up until that point, you know, I could really only think of maybe Back to the Future 2 and 3 that decided to shoot their sequels at the same time. Mm-hmm. Matrix did the same thing, which is it's tough because yeah. you basically have to commit a year of your life to shooting that movie. And I wasn't even like really like plugged in um, to to movie like inf- like I loved movies but like I had no idea about Back to the Future you know those like I, right. I wasn't like aware of a lot of things I wasn't uh, built for my current job yet I guess if that makes sense so that was also one of the first times where uh, I was starting to really plug into movie news uh, you mentioned Lord of the Rings because I was right. super plugged into what was happening with Lord of the Rings and like I was on the one ring.net like every day uh, for casting announcements but then also uh, them announcing yeah we're gonna do Matrix 2 and 3 and we're shooting them at the same time I was like whoa like remember, only the Matrix can do something that cool <laughs> <laughs> I remember going to see Attack of the Clones uh, and that night uh, was the first time I saw the teaser trailer for what would be both Reloaded and Revolutions and I was like 
almost standing ovation. Like it started that That's movie amazing. off. Uh, like people were like, "Oh my god, they're doing two of them!" Yeah, I think people were like surprised that not only were you going to get the sequel, but mm -hmm. something crazy must happen because they're not even waiting a whole year to release the third one. It was like... It was six months. Six months, yeah. Yeah, it was May and November that, that we got the very conclusion. That was a very frustrating six months. <laughs> <laughs> um, but let's talk a little bit about Reloaded because at that point in time, uh, up until Deadpool, actually, Matrix Reloaded was the highest grossing R-rated movie ever. That's crazy. Uh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, it was it was massive opening, and I I have to say for me, I guess I, Hangover was R rated comedy. Hangover was like a huge success for that genre. Yeah. When you but talk overall, about like yeah. overall blockbusters, like Matrix had permeated the culture mm -hmm. so much in only four years. Yeah. That by the time that the Matrix Reloaded came out, it was like I don't know anyone who didn't know. Like Bullet Time had already been mm -hmm. just copied a million parodied times. Parodied and parodied and parodied. Yeah. Uh, you already like Blue Pill, Red Pill, like that kind of stuff had already been kind of in the zeitgeist mm -hmm. at that point. So Reloaded comes out, and it it, it was. Positively reviewed. I think it has like a 70 some odd percent on uh, Rotten Tomatoes. That's it nuts. wasn't until much later that the narrative switched mm -hmm. and it was like garbage. You know, like yeah. these sequels don't exist to me, blah, 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 blah. Well, it's like, it's like the pure love thing. Like, because, you know, I walked out of Phantom Menace like, hell yeah. Right. It's a terrible movie, you know, but like, yeah, I, I walked out of clones like, hell yeah. Like, yep. why? I don't know. <laughs> I actually had the opposite. I went to a, at the time they still did these, uh, a midnight screening of Matrix Reloaded. Mm -hmm. And by the time I got to the architect, I was like, oh my God, just shoot something. I am so tired and this is not yeah. over yet. Yeah. I, I tried to convince myself I liked this movie wasn't until much later that I was like, oh, there's so much more to this movie. I think my expectations were kind of messed up a little bit. So I want to ask you, obviously having seen this movie 30 some odd times in the theater, <laughs> you must have had a Matrix sequel already like figured out in your head when you walked into this. I don't know. I'm trying to remember timeline because I'm old now, Billy, and... I don't remember anything. May um, 2003. Had the Animatrix come out by now? The Animatrix, and we'll get to, we'll talk a little bit more about this later, but the Animatrix was kind of like parallel to, to, re to, to Reloaded and the Enter the Matrix game and essentially all of the, they dumped all this Matrix yeah. stuff out all at once. I don't know if I knew what I wanted the second one to to be in my head. I'm trying to remember if I had seen the Animatrix first because I I loved I loved all of it. I, I really do love pretty much the whole anim and you know it must have come after the second one because there's so much Zion stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, while you're talking I'll see um, if I can look this up. Sorry I didn't mean to uh, no, 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 just no. dump us in. Let's fact check for a while. That'll make a really good podcast. Well I think it's um, interesting too because and I think this is actually part of the point of why I think you know people kind of are just ambivalent at best mm -hmm. about these is that um, actually so the release date was June 3rd uh, for the full Animatrix, which would be about a month after the movie came out. However, okay. the first short, which was Final Flight of the Osiris, which is a lead-in to The Matrix Reloaded, right. was actually playing in theaters, I think in like February, January, February, is kind of like a, a taste of what was coming. Okay, I can't And I think this is why people maybe are kind of just like, ugh. The Matrix set up this world, and mm -hmm. it was very interesting, but it was also, especially if you watch all three of these back together, like it was the most simple way to introduce someone to this world. Mm -hmm. And I said this to you yesterday, it's like they asked a bunch of questions, and we walked out, and we were asking questions. Yeah, we were asking questions. And then before we walked into this one, we were like, okay, I have some questions. And they're like, here's the answers. Also, here's 25 questions you didn't think of, and here's 25 answers for them, by the way. Yeah. And you're just like, information reloaded, it was like overload. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they're no like, we're, here, we're ready to show our work. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, I think the interesting thing is um, The Matrix did such, such smart world building in the same way that the first Star Wars movie did. Uh, just... Tossing in words, tossing in ideas, 
they don't necessarily matter, but they're painting a bigger picture. Like right. Star Wars did such a great job uh, giving you uh, production value with words. Uh, he was in the Clone Wars, you know, st- uh, the Senate's been dissolved, stuff like that. We didn't need to see it. We just know, okay, now there, I know there was a Senate, you know, stuff like that. Uh, the Matrix did the same thing, I think, where uh, they were just tossing I- ideas off, and they they didn't necessarily matter to the story because the story is such a tight, like Joseph Campbell right. hero's journey. Uh, was they just literally took the the hero's journey outline and put sunglasses on it? Like it's <laughs> so just uh, economically tight that all that stuff is just fun, like catnip and world building. Um, I don't even know if I expected to get answers out of it uh, because the questions you leave the first movie with are also like. Um, I'm not going to talk about the movie like it's Nietzsche, but like. For but for a generation, for it, it kind of was. Yeah, and uh, and honestly, you know, like at that point, I'm 17. I haven't I haven't really gotten hardcore philosophical yet. So sure, that was a right. movie. That, like, um, but the there weren't like a lot of lore based questions. I walked out with. It was just more. That was a movie that gave me just bigger questions to like wrestle with. Um, and the Matrix is almost a template to do that. Um, so I wasn't like. I didn't walk out of that movie being like, what was the golden age of the Jedi like? Or, sure, you know, what yeah. was the, the war with the machines initially? Like, I walked out of that movie like, how do I know if I'm not in the construct and right. plugged in? Like, um, so then when the next movie was just like, here's your lore, I was like, I, I don't know if I needed any of that. Yeah, um, I, I definitely think, like, there's really some interesting stuff uh, in the lore that I feel like people either forget or gloss over, or I will freely admit, I, I love Reloaded. I actually really like Revolutions, too. The ideas in them are really fascinating. Sometimes they don't present them in the best way possible. Mm-hmm. Like, wait, it, did I hear that correctly? Yeah. Is that what, like, I think one of the most interesting aspects of The Matrix, and they even say it in the first movie, but they double down and explain it way more in Reloaded, is that this is not the first iteration of The Matrix. He's, you know, Agent yeah. Smith tells him, like, Yeah, we tried time to we make tried your this, world perfect and you like, wouldn't accept it. Right, and then, yeah. and then in this one we find out, like, okay, the second time they tried to make it a fear-based system, accept this, or these freaking monsters, or Hitler will come after you, and that explains the existence of like these ghost twins and why yeah. they look like vampires is because there was a version of the matrix where supernatural things were, were very were real. real. Yeah. And I think like that was sick. Yeah. It's so cool. But the way it's just like given to you by the Oracle, You're like, what? If, yeah, it feels very passe. I'm like, wait a second. That is awesome. Yeah. You know? Like, can we pump the break? Look, the Wachowskis. And I think what their legacy will be is, they never no half measures with the Wachowskis. Right. They will always go a thousand percent, and I, I love that. I I love that about them with um, Jupiter Ascending. Okay, Jupiter Ascending's not good, but oh my god! Like the Wachowskis were like bees can sense royalty. Put it in. Hell yeah, you know, like <laughs> so. Sometimes with the, the with the big swings, you get stuff like Cloud Atlas. You get stuff like Jupiter Ascending. Uh, you get a lot of the Matrix sequel-y problems where they're just like, look at all these ideas, right? Uh, and then sometimes it really works. The Matrix uh, Sense Eight uh, is Sense Eight to me is like so many of the ideas from the the Matrix sequels, and they kind of make it gooder, you know, and, right. and kind of fix it. Uh, Speed Racer, I think, is like, here's a bunch of crazy ideas, and boom, it worked. For some, re- for some reason, idiots didn't like it. Um, but yeah, you know, you're totally right. And it's so much, to, like, when you're literally... Uh, I, I I can only picture the Will Ferrell parody version of him now. Remember the, oh, the MTV? Architect, yeah, yeah, the architect. Like when it's Ergo, literally like. Yeah. I have no clue what the hell I'm saying. I saw this with my dad because my dad was actually really excited to see it. And um, I walked out like, you know, trying to be like, that highway chase was cool. <laughs> and uh, my dad was like, what in the hell was that? 
was that? Like, there, a man just said words in a chair for like a half hour, and so, he, he. I remember my dad also trying to be like, "This is an interesting idea, and that's right. an interesting." But oh my god, like, what was that? So let's talk about the architect because I feel like this is the the piece of Reloaded that is most ripe for parody. Mm-hmm. It's the most like, I get it. I've heard every. He's a Orville Redenbacher talking like a wiener. Yes, I get it, a hundred percent. In fact, when I saw it the first time, I was like, I don't like this part. I actually think the architect is my most favorite interesting Matrix character. And those, okay. those are actually my favorite scenes now. And I, I think I understand a little bit more why. First of all, he talks like that because he's 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 a machine. He's, he's a, a robot. robot. Yeah, he's a robot. He doesn't understand human uh psyche he doesn't understand how to like talk to someone because that's why he failed at the matrix he literally says like i don't get it so i had to use the oracle Mm -hmm. who's basically built just to be uh an interface an interface for you because i i don't get you guys so i get why he talks the way he does it's very purposeful the other thing that i think is there's a movie called funny games and I hate funny games because it's two hours <laughs> of just baiting the audience. And like any time that you think something good's going to happen, they will literally break the fourth wall and undo it because they want to torture you. Mm-hmm. And I hate it for that reason. But that's why it exists. Mm-hmm. And I realize that maybe that was part of my initial dissatisfaction with The Matrix Reloaded because when he's like, you're really the sixth one, I was like, are you kidding me? This whole thing sucks. But then I realized, like, what a great reveal that actually is in that you have been rooting for the Superman mm-hmm. and then to be told at the end of the movie, like, yeah, we made you a Superman and we gave you this illusion of a choice because that's the only way we can control you is if you think you're free. And mm-hmm. then once once enough of you are free that it could be an actual problem, we just restart it all over again. Yeah. Like, what a kick in the balls. I actually think that's one of the biggest movie twists of all time that no one talks about. Yeah. Well, because I think it was, um, it's because I, I love all the ideas in Reload. It's, I think it's just at, at that point, it's like a structure thing um, and like a presentation thing. Right. Um, where like it, it's almost uh, uh in the last dark. Have you read the Dark Tower? Uh, I've audio booked it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so kind of. Does the hey guys spoiler alerts for the Dark Tower five four three two one uh in the last in the last book do they include Stephen King's last minute essay before you get to the last chapter of the Dark Tower? Oh, where is that? Where it's like. Hang I, on, guys. <laughs> is that the one where he's like, I would advise you if you're happy to stop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And it's like 20 pages of just <laughs> right. him jerking off on the page uh, about, like, what literature means. <laughs> um, that, like, that's kind of what, looking back, I'm like, that's kind of what that feels like as the Wachowskis are a little like, pause. Here's some cool shit that'll blow your <laughs> mind. But we're just going to tell it to you. Um, I also might be completely off base because, again, like we said, uh I saw this once. Sure. <laughs> um, but I think and a I lot just of... haven't revisited for what. It, you know what? You know what it is? You know what I think I, I haven't revisited the second one? Because there is a lot of cool stuff. And the ideas, I think, are really solid. Is they do that twist. Um, and then the third one keeps putting so many hats on the hats mm-hmm. that I think the third one is what really turned me off. And because of the way that they were presented, it's like you you can't not lump them together in mm-hmm. some fashion. But I think if you can take Reloaded, what I really appreciate about Reloaded is that it is a beautiful, gut-wrenching mirror to the first movie in the mm-hmm. sense that the hero's journey is he doesn't believe he's the one, but then he goes to Morpheus and he's like, you always believed and now I believe and therefore I am. And he goes forward. This is the opposite. The whole movie is like, I am the one. And then he has to go back to Morpheus in a mirror scene and like, actually, we were both wrong. Like, we both believed in something that 
is in a thing. Is, is, yeah. is, is by design another system of control, which I think is really, like, it's really smart. Like, that's, like, mm-hmm. when we talk about the great sequels, it's the, st- it's the things that get bigger and darker. I'm like, how does it get bigger and darker than your big revelation at the, be- yeah. at, the, at the end of the first movie turns out to be another scheme of the bad guys? Well, that's another fun irony of, uh, sorry, not to take it in this direction. Sure, take it. Take it but uh, that's go. another, that's an, another irony uh, to me of, um, like, alt-right, folks like taking red pilling from okay. from the matrix the right. idea of it because they're like oh we're free like we don't need all that other crap but you're just in another system of control because like all of these the you know all these like hucksters with their patreons and youtube channels that are asking you for money because they don't like uh liberals either like that's just another system of control like that that's just another funny weird irony to me you just made me think of it like i, I mean that's the th- that's they, like, they did the same right. thing they they're like oh man we don't we're, we're free of the system and it's, it's like, like no you not. just it, it's, yeah you bought cool. in to another that's one that's why i think like there are so many layers especially now to this movie that it's like no i gotta watch this movie again i don't want to tell people Jerk. like you didn't get it because i feel like that's such a a middle finger and also like i our friend lon harris just had this tweet the other day that i loved it's like you're not stupid if you don't get a movie. Sometimes Mm -hmm. a movie, like, you need to watch it multiple times and then you get what you get from it. Mm -hmm. It's not like a math problem where there's an answer and you got to solve it. But I do think that there's something inherently, like, relevant about this idea that even your sense of choice could is, potentially is be part of a manufactured, larger system. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I and that's what I think is interesting. And that's why also you were talking about, you know, you came out of Truman Show, you came out of Dark City, you came out of Matrix, and there was one question that which is, what is my reality? Mm-hmm. And then you go into Matrix Reloaded and they're not interested in delving any deeper into that subject. They are interested in asking like new questions that are harder questions. Yeah. What is purpose? What is the nature of my choices? Mm -hmm. Do I have control over my choices or are my choices already made? And now I have to figure out why at a subconscious level I make these choices. And And it's so interesting to like, and again, not calling us dumb, but I'll I'll put myself in that group because again, I saw this one once. Right. Um, But like, that's so, (laughs) again, but that's also why I appreciate and love the Wachowskis is because they expect so much of you. Right. Uh, Again, sometimes it lands, sometimes it doesn't. Um, But I I do think, you know, at that point, I was still, this is 2003, four? Yeah, three. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. So I'm in college at this point. Um, But I still think that like, I kind of just wanted like... While they're running through a hotel lobby, you know, shooting shooting people. <laughs> like I think I was just kind of like more I more of that. Like <laughs> yeah. that's what what? Right. Um, and and that's why I say like I feel like this movie is not interested really in like they'll give you like I still think the car chase scene, the freeway scene, like even if you hate this movie, like, it's dope. How can you not be impressed by yeah. like when Trinity's going backwards in traffic on the motorcycle? Yeah, come like, on. Yeah, that's even amazing. Now I know she's fine, and I like grip the seat. I'm like, oh god, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is so dangerous. I think the twins are super cool. Um, the fact that they're kind of weird and glitchy, and like, I, I, I think, I think that's super fun. Um, I'm trying to remember the keymasters in the third one. The keymasters in the second one. Yeah, is the, the key second maker, one. The keymaker. Keymaker. Yeah. Um, I don't remember his deal. (laughs) (laughs) But see, and I think that's the thing. It's like this movie, like. There's so much in this movie. It gets very masturbatory in its lore. And I'm not going to deny, like. But that also goes to their bigger theme of purpose. Everything in the Matrix has a purpose. And if it doesn't, it Mm -hmm. gets deleted. And if it doesn't get deleted, that means, like, something either went shady, which Mm -hmm. is why we get the Merovingian, or uh, something went wrong, which is why we get. Uh, Smith and I love that there. Are, you know, now you think what a cool moment at the end of the Matrix when Neo dives into Smith and just like obliterates him and from the inside out. Him up. Yeah. What you don't realize is like, oops, because now he, you know, Agent Smith's purpose is to destroy Neo, but he gets some of this rebellious human anomaly, the code attached to him when Neo does that, and that's why he's. Uh, he doesn't go back to the source when he gets deleted. He's like, mm-hmm. no, there's something in me now that says I don't want to do that. It's like Neo created his own worst enemy when he did that yeah. really cool looking thing. It's like, 
Oops. Which is interesting because, you know, in the first one, you know, Morpheus is like our one advantage is like they're still in a system based on rules and we can operate outside of that. Right. That's sort of an interesting power up for uh, for, Smith. for Smith. And then when he's yeah. like, I, I don't believe in the rules anymore. It's like, whoa. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Now, do I think it's a little corny that he can like get in that guy's head in the real world? Eh, a little bit. But remember he like. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, that stuff. Again, I, I'd have to go back through, so uh, no one go through this and be like, Joe's an idiot! Uh, <laughs> God, I, screw you, I don't remember Matrix 3 that well. But I, I remember even actively, like, in the third one, like, actively glazing over. Because it's such and just a... just being like, yeah, what? It doesn't really pay off other than, like, we're going to make him blind. It's like... Okay. Yeah, he's Maybe. blind. Trinity's dead. Um, I don't even remember if she stays dead. Like I, she does. St- like she dies in the third one, like two thirds of the way in. So it's pretty permanent. Yeah. Uh, so they're they're going to the machine city. Which, yeah, the by machine the way, city. Uh, if you guys ever, first of all, you should watch the Animatrix because it's great. Yeah. And they do a whole history, which is the first and second Renaissance. Uh-huh. Which there are images in that cartoon that still disturb me to this yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. But also, fun fact, uh, all of The Matrix, all three movies, uh, the real world, it's probably all like Middle East because they're the machine headquarters, Zero One, was like yeah. Mesopotamia. Yeah. So it's like all this is Middle Eastern. I yeah. just think that's weird. Yeah. No, no one I think that's cool. It. Yeah, no. Yeah. I, I, uh, also, so, weird sidebar. Do you remember the cartoon Operation Kids Next Door? I do, yeah. They did... I've, I never really watched it that much. Every now and then it would just be on while I was channel flipping. And the reason I know about that show is because I was channel flipping and uh, I just saw like a frame of animation and I was like, this looks familiar. And they did a whole like shot for shot, line for line, amazing parody of those two episodes of the Animatrix right. to like set up the adult world, <laughs> the evil <laughs> adult world. It was brilliant. Sorry, uh, I, no, the, I, again, huge like, digression. But the the Animatrix, and let's actually dive into this because I think this actually birthed a problem that I don't mm-hmm. necessarily like, but I understand. The Matrix Reloaded and Revolutions by itself. Very interesting ideas, mm-hmm. great set pieces, but this to me. You know me... what? Run. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, I, I think the other the other thing on 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 the other two is because the ideas are incredible, um, and I don't think we think about this a lot with the first one. But like, I I care about everyone. Yes. Uh, for, to a certain extent. So in things like the third, like it it's felt like in the especially in the third one, where it's just like eh, Trinity's gone, you know, stuff like that. I was like. You know, I I care about these people in a way more than I care about whatever destination or you're trying to get you, Neo just, to. You don't and like have the time the... to have that scene of like the not like this switch apoc yeah. moment, you yeah. know. But I think, and I think that stuff exists, and this is where I think the problem is. And Star Wars kind of has this, especially now. Mm-hmm. But to get the full picture and context and emotional value of everything, you couldn't just watch these movies. You had to play the Into the Matrix game. You had to watch the mm-hmm. Animatrix because it wasn't just like, oh, that's neat to know. It's like, oh, I actually really need to know that. Yeah. And the one that I specifically am like, I, it drives me bonkers that it's not part of the movie is in real life, the actress who played the Oracle passed away before mm-hmm. she could shoot her scenes for Revolutions. They brought in a new actress. Okay. But they explain in such an interesting way why that happens in the game. game. And it's like it gives character growth to not only the Oracle, but also to the Merovingian. And then that little Indian girl, Sati, who you're like, why are you in this movie? It's like now it makes sense if you guys don't know and don't feel like digging out your PS2. uh, The Merovingian has always had a thing against the Oracle. Right. Right. Probably because he was essentially the head guy in the first version of The Matrix, which is why he can do a bunch of yeah, cool shit. and realize he couldn't pull it off on his own. Uh, he doesn't like the Oracle, which is why he asks Neo or Trinity to bring him the eyes of the Oracle. Uh, but uh, the little girl from Matrix Revolutions, uh, any program that needs to get deleted because it has no purpose... Uh, if you want to be saved, you go to the Merovingian, and it's very like black market. And he said, "Sure, I will save your daughter from deletion 
if you bring me the code for the Oracle. Mm -hmm. So the Oracle's code got corrupted and basically her shell was stolen by the Merovingian, but she was able to change and revert her shell uh, so he couldn't get her eyes, which is essentially like her way of seeing all the possible outcomes. Yeah, that's cool. Right. I I did not play the game. Yeah, great explanation, and it makes the Merovingian, like, it makes more sense why he's like, I want the Oracle, and you're like, where is this coming from? It's like, it's all there, but that's all stuff that they're like, well, you gotta play the video game. Yeah, It's like, and they really did take, again, they took another big swing of in terms of, like, multimedia presentation of stuff that, like, no one really does. Like, that's why you're never, you're not gonna see a Sokotano in a Star Wars movie. Which is a bummer. There, which is a bummer. Right. Well, yeah, but, you know, uh, on one hand, yeah. But on the other hand, it's like, they're never going... Or with the MCU, like, Quake's not going to jump on screen, which, again, is a bummer, because I think that's a cool character, and I think she's a great actress, and had I think that show deserves more than the, the MCU has given it. Um, but, but I think The Matrix proved that, like, no one's going to... Like be like, oh yeah, the required reading. Like right. I'm in. You know, I think I think the Matrix kind of proved that because they, I appreciate those swings, but I also think that like they kind of proved that like, oh, this might not work. I mean, that's like if if Anakin was in part two and then like the next movie he was Darth Vader and you had to play the video game to figure <laughs> out why. Yeah, you're, you're yeah. Like, yeah. Wait a second. Yeah. Um, I I hate that, and I actually think that, like, you know, Ken Knapsack, we we recorded, and now I'm going to have to re-record, an episode about Rogue One, and I had a lot of problems with some of the characters in that, and he was like, well, there's this novel... Uh, that really flushes out. I'm like, I don't, I don't like, son of a bitch. That. Yeah, if it's not yeah. in the movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then I don't really have time for. Well, it. yeah. I mean, even with the with the new trilogy, like, there's so much, like, information you need to even get on board with like what's going on, and like, well, there's a book, you know, like right. Bloodline, the Leia book. Bloodline is such a perfect, like, here's why we're we are where we're at. Uh, but again, you know, like, most people aren't gonna go. Okay, I'll read a book. You know, so that right. I can be like, what's a first order? You know, yeah, why exactly. do I care? Yeah. Which is, I don't want to digress, but I think that is my one criticism of the new Star Wars is like, I don't really know what the first order wants. Oh, I mean, it's impossible. Yeah, yeah. Like, they have an impossible task of, of being like, here's like the third chapter of a story you didn't get the second chapter of. <laughs> it's, just, it's hard. But I think, yeah, look, Matrix, there is a complete story there, but the comics and the animatrix Mm -hmm. and enter the matrix are almost required for you to get the full scope of what's happening. So I'm not going to fault you there. If you come into reloaded and you're just going to watch reloaded and Mm -hmm. maybe revolutions and you're like, I don't, a hundred percent get everything. It's like, I get it. Yeah. Cause there are literally crucial pieces that are in another piece of media. Yeah. Cause for us, we were like, Oh, the kid's rad. And, and he's in the second one, right? Yeah. Uh, and we like him because he's in the Animatrix and his story, that skateboard story is great. Yeah. Where he like saved himself. Like yeah. that's awesome. So when you see him in the movie, you already know who he is and you're already rooting for him. Like mm-hmm. it's a little bit of cheating, but at the same time, I guess you could say that about any Avengers movie. Sure. You know? Yeah. It's like if you didn't watch that one, you don't have the context. Mm-hmm. But I really feel like and, they, the, and you know, the MCU has a cheat too, where it's like ultimately like you know, you know Spider Man's deal. You know everyone's deal, essentially. So like the right. MCU can shorthand in a way that like the Wachowskis have never been able to. Yeah, and, and I also just think that they like overestimated like people. I guess people's interest in the lore of the Matrix. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I personally like. I find this fascinating. I also just think it's interesting that like, you know, you think like, oh yeah, this is in the not too distant future it's like no actually based on the lore this is like twenty seven ninety nine mm-hmm. because the matrix has been destroyed like six times yeah so there's 600 years right there um i also think that there's something like off-putting but super interesting in what the architect says like yeah you're the sixth one and the one is basically he has to go back and lie to everybody Mm -hmm. like you come up with this fancy story about uh so it's like all these like corrupt like saviors like through the years like i don't know i just find all that stuff interesting but one thing people don't like and i get it is (laughs) it's almost like right at the end of the movie Neo becomes a Jedi when he can stop the things in real life. People are like, "Come on!" Yeah, that's where I, that's where I was also really like, "What are we doing?" Right. Um, and I honestly, 
Like there are chunks of I remember of the second. Like I, I vaguely generally remember the second one. The third one, I I, I know there were mechs, there was a mech and squid fight. Right. Well, the third and one Trinity. takes place mostly. It's like in the real world, and yeah. then you really just get that big fight at the end. Yeah, with but we're Neo. At, and but you know at that point, you know we're at the point of like yeah the Jedi stuff in the real world and which I, again they explain. But they do it in such a haphazard, huh, manner that you probably miss it. It's when yeah. Neo makes contact with the source. Think of it this way. Everyone's Ethernet wired into the Matrix, yeah. right? But once Neo gets to the source, he gets a little Wi-Fi adapter, mm-hmm. just like all the squiddies do. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, he's not a Jedi. He just can Wi-Fi send a signal to them. And they say that. But they say it in the most obtuse, hard to, yeah, to yeah, yeah, translate yeah. way that it and seems And I think, stupid. you know, at, at that point, you know, you're also kind of like, I don't know, it's an interesting movie because I, I think that aesthetically, like, the fake world where you get to flip around and be who you actually, you're, uh, you're the physical represent, the digital representation of your, of your mental self or whatever, right. like... Like that is, I largely I think uh, what people like attach themselves to, sure. which is interesting. That I think what really plugged people into liking the movies is like, no man, I like I like being a part of the system, right? But like I fancy myself a rogue in it, you know. Um, and the stuff that was really about. Neo sort of like really trying to like break the wheel and be like no 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 that in itself is a system of control and and like uh, we're gonna put on this hat and then put on this hat of you know like interacting with the the machine system in the real world and and all of that I think is people the further you got away from people being like no man I'm comfortable in the system right maybe operating slightly outside of it so I can have a cool coat you know yeah um, that's where I think a lot of people started to fall off which in itself is like a very fascinating philosophical like exploration of because the matrix. it's like a living embodiment of the themes yeah. of this yeah, yeah, movie yeah. Yeah. but also too like you know the first matrix like it, they do present you a matrix world that you understand and even though there are aspects of it you're like okay that like that's not my life but like a desk job like mm-hmm. stuff like that where it's like okay i i understand this world by Reloaded, and especially by Revolutions, it's like, nope, this is all fake. I have no attachment to whatever this world mm-hmm. would be with, like, the Chateau and, and, you know, that, like, crazy fight and stuff. It's like, it's all cool, but it just feels like, well, this this Matrix isn't, like, a world that I could be fooled into thinking is, like, my world. Yeah, I don't recognize this anymore. Exactly. Yeah. And I think maybe that's where, like, a little bit of the disconnect is, is because we as the audience took the red pill the first time around. Mm-hmm. Then they're like, yeah, we don't need to, like, pull the wool over your eyes like we did in the first one where you're not sure if this is the real world or not. And I, I think, yeah, I think people still want to be plugged in a little bit. They wanted yeah. to see other people not accept this, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't know. It is weird. It, it is, is weird very weird. And yeah. I hate that now I kind of want to watch them again. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just like screw here, you, this, William. This is the uh, this is the analogy I, I thought of when I thought about these Matrix movies. It's like for the, it's like going to a restaurant and you get the most delicious baked uh, piece of salmon you've ever had in your life. Mm-hmm. It's so good you can't stop thinking about it. It changed your view of what salmon could taste like. And you go tell all your friends like we've got to go to this restaurant. It's the best salmon I've ever had in my life. And you go back there with them and they give you you're like salmon. Just give me the salmon. And they bring you the most delicious looking piece of salmon sushi you've ever had in your life. And you're like the hell is this? And they're like it, it's salmon. And you're like no, no, no. Yes, it's still salmon, but that's not the what, yeah. the way you They're gave like, it no, to me last time. No, but this is more complicated. <laughs> They're like, no, but it still is good. But it's you're like, no, 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 no. That's not what I meant. And I think that's what these movies are. Yeah, it's the same, yeah. but it's not the same at all. You yeah. know. And I think people wanted more of the first Matrix, and I don't mean this in a negative, like condescending way, but I I kind of think the first Matrix is just more simple. And yeah, I, no, I don't think that, I don't think that's a negative or condescending thing because I think that's. A lot of what we liked about it, it was this perfect balance of like, there was just enough philosophy 101. Mm -hmm. There was just enough like cool stuff you had never seen in a movie before. 
Um, the the casting was you know had just I don't know it was just this great peppering of like just enough it was just right like that was stew baby. Um, <laughs> I also think that, like bullet time was such a game changer mm-hmm. that I think a lot of people probably myself included went into the second one being like what's the new game what's changer? the new and, and they were like, like they were like we're gonna game change your mind right and it was like no like, no no, no. <laughs> what's like the next bullet time yeah. like is someone gonna like fart bubbles in slow motion yeah. or something <laughs> what see, is it what's Part time. Let me see it. Um, And I guess they kind of did that with the Burly Brawl, uh, you know, Neo versus like a thousand Smiths in a park. But yeah. But man, that that does not hold up. No. no. Like it feels like they were like, this was a great idea. We gave it the good old college try Mm -hmm. and it just turned out as good as we could make it. Which is why Matrix still holds up effect wise because again, it's, it's grounded in the. Uh, there's yay more meta commentary sure. about about the matrix and systems, but also we accept the the special all the special effects in the first one because again it's still very grounded in the real world. Right, it's all elevated, but it, like it's still two dudes kung fu fighting in like locations we see and can recognize. Um, Even the matrix stuff is still very like nothing is overblown. Like they're not trying to do a thousand CGI guys on one CGI mm-hmm. guy. The CGI is used in a computer sense. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like I'm in a computer in not a weird way. You yeah, know yeah, I mean? yeah. And you know, even for, again, to just keep going meta and meta and meta, the moment we see something in a movie that we don't necessarily like accept, we're going to instantly, part of us is going to instantly start looking for the reasons why we don't. We're going to start looking for the mistakes. We're going to start looking for like the glitches. And so the moment there are a million Smiths, um, you're not even kind of focusing on the cool, like he's fighting the first one, you know, like right. you're looking at the guys in the back where you're like, oh, they didn't even render that one, you know, like, oh, Which is so I see all the glitches. In story, that's why people would reject a version of the Matrix. Yeah. You would be someone yeah, who, yeah, yeah. At a, you know, I think that's also so interesting. They say, like, yeah, uh, we had to design a system that 99 percent of the people accepted, uh, even at, at a near unconscious level. Mm hmm. And then you find out, by the way, not only do you accept 99% of this movie, even at an unconscious level, but there's that 1% that's like, that looks Wait weird. Wait a minute, yeah. But then Neo, his whole storyline is he accepted, at even at an unconscious level, that he was this deity. And it's like, nope, like, you mm-hmm. are still part, like, all of this boils down to, like, again, even as a viewer, it's like choice. What do you choose? To mm-hmm. t- it's like you already decided whether or not you like this, but now you have to understand like why it is that mm-hmm. you're like unconsciously like pushing this away. And it's like, what is it? I, I don't know. I just feel like this movie is challenging and it's relentlessly like asking you to to think. Yeah. And I think part of it's like. I don't want to think about that. You and, know? <laughs> yeah. And you know, out of all the things, you know, the one thing I don't have a problem with the sex rave. It, it is what it is. Never man. bothered me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like I was like, yeah, the real world sucks. Like, of course, all they would do is bone like as much as they could. <laughs> like there's death squids looking for them and they live in a cave. Yeah. Like, I, a lot of people are like the Zion stuff. It was boring. It's like, well, you knew it existed. What did you think it was? I guess that's my question. It's like mm-hmm. I didn't have any preconceived notion of what Zion a was or B should be. Uh but uh, yeah, people well, just... you know, it, it hits that line of like, here's my adventuring group in the in the submarine, in, you know, in the Nebuchadnezzar, um, right. and like that's cool. Um, in the same way that like Luke Han and Leia flying around in the Falcon is cool. Um, but then you're like, oh man, there's like a Jedi training somebody on this ship, and like that's pretty interesting. Um, What's and, and she's uh, a government representative. Let's uh, let's go macro a little bit and see what the Senate and the Jedi Temple are. Oh God, <laughs> you know it's sort of the same with that. Where but it's if like, they were all boning each other, you'd be like, <laughs> sick. True. Okay, yeah, 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 fair. <laughs> but you know, because there is like a, I feel like uh, there's a little like um, municipal politics even in the Zion stuff. Or like I think there's like a mayor walking around and he's like, oh, Morpheus. Working people up again, or I mean, I also yeah. might be making that up. No, but, uh, th- it's like there's there's definitely like an elder council. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And and the general uh, the whole time is the one that like doesn't yeah. he he doesn't believe in the concept That's of right. the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so again, I think it's 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 again like how much lore you're looking for, right? But also like 
I feel like as as the target audience of these movies, like, don't we like crave lore for this stuff, or is it more just like we? I don't know. Anytime I, don't know, I think have, it, I think it goes back to. Uh, I don't think lore is what I needed out of the the Matrix because it just gave me ideas, and I was like, "That's cool as hell," you know. And that that's kind of all I needed. Whereas, um, uh, you know, Star Wars, yeah, like built for lore. Like let's let's explore the world. What's a Mandalorian all about? You know. Right. Um, but like I think with the with the Matrix, I was like, but then that's the weird thing is is because like then I didn't like the second two movies because they were like, here's more ideas. And right. I, like, it's like so, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. I think it really to me, and maybe I'm wrong, but I just think it's like the question that they ask in the first one is something, especially if you saw it around that time of your life, where mm-hmm. you're just like. Yeah, what a like it's that crazy like oh man what if my life isn't yeah. real? Yeah, it's no very, one asked me if I wanted to get baptized. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very daydreamy in a sense. Like, mm-hmm. uh, whereas the notion of purpose and choice, those are scary things to have to confront yeah. yourself with. Yeah, what the is first one, the first is, one is you're flirting right. with with the ideas, and like the second one is like. Now you're at the altar and you are marrying the ideas. And you're like, whoa, what, 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 whoa, we were just. Yeah, it's like, what is your purpose on this planet? And if you don't have a purpose, then what do you do? You're like, I, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, bullet time, bullet time. <laughs> and I think that's where a lot of the disconnect is. They are much more interested in ideas than they are in set pieces. That saying, like, yeah, we still get There's still like, some really good set pieces. The, yeah. the freeway chase is amazing. The burly brawl, I I applaud them. I'm pretty sure I thought it was cool at the time. Mm-hmm. Now it's the only part of that movie. I'm like, eh. yeah. but I find myself now uh, skipping around to the the exposition heavy stuff because I feel like hmm. that to me is the most interesting parts of that movie. That whole bench uh, sequence with the Oracle where she it literally is just two people talking, yeah. talking heads for 15 minutes. Yeah. All fascinating stuff because you get to find out the like the machines are so freaking smart because even the Oracle is a little freaking liar and she's a little manipulator mm-hmm. and she's going to say whatever she needs to say to get, her, to get, to you get to it done. Point, yeah. And then hope that you make the choice uh, once you're there. You know, who would have thought that Neo choosing humanity or choosing one human over humanity would be like the end game? That's why I love that part at the end where the where the uh, the architect and, and revolution just comes out and she's just sitting on the bed. She's like, you played a dangerous game, girl. She's like, change always is, man. Yep. He's like, did you know? She's like, nah, I just kind of hope for the best. Yeah, <laughs> Cause that which is a cool moment. Right, because yeah. that would have meant if Neo was on the path to destroy everything. Mm hmm. Um, both machines and humans. And I love that the, when the architect says, he's like, you need, or Neo says, you need humans. He's like, there are other levels of survival we're willing to accept. Like, damn, yeah. these machines are brutal. There's really cool stuff in these movies, but uh, what are you going to do, man? The, like, people people just do not accept. They do not like this. They, they blue pill it. They blue pill it away from their yep. minds. And, it, you know, I, I kind of did, too. Uh, and I've replaced it with just happy memories of that Aeon Flexi short where they're getting chased by the weird spindly leg robots. <laughs> um, I get it. Th- I don't begrudge anyone that doesn't like these movies because I do feel like they're they're very different. And if like if you came to Matrix two and three hoping for more of Matrix one, I could definitely understand Mm -hmm. being disappointed i think i just and like i said i was but i'm now open to something a little a little different but i could definitely see people coming into this like i don't like it yeah 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 yeah. (laughs) it's also cool to me too that i will i'm i'm now interested in revisiting though uh i will say it's cool by the way because you're playing the whole time that was always my plan (laughs) Uh, i do think it's cool because you would think that they would have to regress it's like they made neo so op by the end of that first matrix that you're like well you either have to stop here Mm -hmm. or or you're gonna have to take his powers away because he can do anything and they don't they double down and they actually give you probably the best Superman movie we've ever had with Matrix Reloaded. They're like, no, he is Superman. We're not taking away his powers yeah. because his powers are not his character. They're yeah. just a part of him. Yeah. Which but I think what is- we are going to do is make him question his purpose and yeah. and 
him like in Superman general. Superman returns it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, you know, yeah. I think there's a lot of similarities now that you say it like that because it is like, oh, I just wanted to see Superman like F things up. And it's like, well, no, Superman Returns is about a god coming to terms with what happens when his purpose is mm -hmm. uh, no longer needed. His special like, purpose. Well, that's what Reloaded mm -hmm. is. It's yep. like you've got, uh, although there's no freeway chase in Superman Returns. Now I gotta, now I gotta rewatch them. Uh, yeah, oh god, that's a movie that could have used freeway chase. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know what? I gotta. I, I feel like it's Matrix season. Uh, there's, there's something in the air. Uh, our friend Vanessa Gritton finally right. saw the first yeah, one for the very yeah. first time. I, you know what? I was just thinking because I saw her post about that. I'm like, I don't know if I saw it for the first time today. If I'd be like, all right, like, I rewatched it. Kind of maybe maybe last year I, I rewatched the first one and it was still like. Hell yeah. I mean, <laughs> but I have so much nostalgia yeah. wrapped up in it. I don't think, I don't, look, I don't even think it's nostalgia, but it's just like by the time now, if you saw it, it's like, it's like if I, if I saw 2001 A Space Odyssey the first time today, it's like I would 100% appreciate everything historical, but it's like this idea of the evil AI taking over. It's like, You're like I got it. I've seen uh, it. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it a million times. I've seen Bullet Time a million times. Like, I, I'm, mm -hmm. I don't know if she did a podcast about it or whatever, but I'd be generally interested to see what she thought. Also, anytime someone's like, you have to watch this, nine times out of ten, you. She um, loved. She loved it. I think. Um, uh, she she saw it. They showed it at the Vista. I think. Oh, cool. Oh, so she got um, to see in a theater. She, she got to see it on the big screen, like yeah. with a with a with an audience, and uh, which is great, I think. Um, and she was like, "I just kept yelling, that's so rad!" Like at the screen <laughs> during different scenes, that people were I like, never "What's got your to deal?" See the first Matrix in a theater. Uh, I will. Uh, I'll, I'll lend you one of mine. <laughs> one of my times. I uh, I wasn't really allowed to see R-rated movies, with a few exceptions here and there. And Matrix was the first one that my parents hadn't already seen. That I was just like, please let me rent mm -hmm. this. And I rented it from Blockbuster. And even playing four by three pan and scan VHS, it still was able to blow my mind. That first Matrix look, you just can't touch it in terms of, that's the other thing too, like not only did it do things philosophically really cool, special effects really cool, mm -hmm. but just like action sequences, yeah, they're really dope. cool. Reloaded, yeah. eh, it doesn't really try to change any other genres. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. But I really love Reloaded. I really love, uh, I love the ideas it presents. I think revolutions, they're just like, we gotta, we gotta, tie this up real fast here. Mm -hmm. It feels a little rushed. Uh, I think there's a good reason why. I don't know if you saw it, but you don't remember anything about it if you did. Yeah, I, I mean, I saw it. <laughs> there's a weird <sighs> baby face made out of uh, like nanobots at the yeah. end. Yeah, I don't like nanobots or anything. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm big on the record on not liking nanobots and nanotech. Um, yeah, I, I remember I remember the big set piece being like a bunch of people in robot suits, like standing at the bottom of a room while squids swirled around in the front and they shot machine guns at them. Yeah. And like, that's kind of. That's about like, they do that for like 45 minutes. They do too. that for a long time. It was a really yeah. long time. Yeah. And then. That's kind of uh, all I remember from the third one. Neo sacrifices himself, wipes out Smith. I don't, I still don't 100% understand how that happened, but. I don't know if I saw the third one in the theater. Uh, not a lot come of people to, did. Come, so, to, come to think about it. That's the interesting thing is... Because uh, I don't know if I've... Revolutions dropped about 66 to 68% <sighs> in its second weekend. It made less than half total of Damn. what Reloaded did. So Damn. a lot of people went to Reloaded and then must have just been like, nah, I'm good. I don't care anymore. That, that must have been me. Because I honestly... I'm trying to go back and remember. like, Because I'm so... That would have been Patchy no on November that one? of 2000. I also think it six months, I get it. They wanted to yeah. like, keep it, but it's like, I feel like a full year would have been probably a better solve. If probably. The, there was nothing coming out really in the summer of 2004. You had Spider-Man 2, and that's the only one I can think of off the top yeah. of my head. I think, honestly, I think I might have watched that on DVD and like half watched it. Which is crazy because it ends on such a cliffhanger that you would think like you'd be like, "Oh, I gotta know what happens next," but yeah. I guess not. Yeah, I don't think I, I don't, I, I don't even think I might have. Like now, I'm really trying to remember, and I'm like, "Have I even seen all of the third one?" Um, By the way, uh, Matrix Reloaded. I'm sure it's 
cringe now, but I loved that soundtrack when it came out. It was like Rob Zombie had his little reload. Like, oh was, yeah, I mean, yeah. The first one's great too. Tom's um, a bomb from uh, Rage Against the Machine. They even weirdly, it's in the credits. They have a, a <laughs> they have a Matrix inspired Dave Matthews Band song. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> now I have to seek that out. I don't remember that at all. Oh yeah. God. Matrix um, is big on music. You know the the interesting thing to me because every couple of years you keep hearing about rebooting those movies I think the only way you can do it is if it is actually like a really twisted screwed up they hit the reboot switch like the characters literally hit the reboot somehow like on the original trilogy and we're in a new construct or in a new matrix I personally... And it's sad. <laughs> you don't... Like, they have given you so many opportunities, like, different jumping off points for storytelling that I think a full stop reboot is a mistake. Yeah. Like, I'm not a proponent of prequels for most things, but I'd be interested to see the rejection of the first couple Matrixes. Mm-hmm. I think that'd be interesting. Like, imagine a movie like The Truman Show where you're stuck in a utopia and you don't realize, like, something's wrong, but I don't know what it is. And do it Cloverfield style, where the whole movie is someone just like, this reality is weird. And at the end, you realize it's a Matrix movie. Yeah. I think yeah, that, that would be interesting. Cool, that could know? be interesting. Uh, but I, I don't think you need to go like, and, and I know that there was like. I some, mean, they will. <laughs> I mean, they will. But there, I know there was also some like massive multiplayer game, like the Matrix Online, that yeah. happened, and it took place after the Matrix. And whoever played that seemed to really like it. Yeah, I'm sure none of that will count as canon, though. Yeah, I don't know. I think at that point they had learned their lesson. I think that maybe I remember that game because I was like, "Ooh, should I?" Uh, but I was already. Uh, doing so not good at college because of video games that I think I, I just didn't just didn't play it. You didn't want to be um, part of the Merovingians crew, <laughs> <laughs> where you could eat orgasm pies. I think I was <laughs> Jesus. I think I was uh, busy with my fifteenth Final Fantasy IX replay. <laughs> By the way, just so all of you at home know how much of a virgin I was uh, when I saw <laughs> Matrix Reloaded. I didn't put two and two together that that was an orgasm. I thought he made her pee her pants when she (laughs) 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 that piece of (laughs) it wasn't until much later that I was like, oh, it was way funnier when (laughs) he made her pee her pants. And that's how little I knew about women Yay. when I saw Matrix Real (laughs) last week. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, so if you could. Uh, kind of shepherd the Matrix moving forward, what would you do with it? Um, I, I don't think a, a studio would do either like sideways or meanwhile on stories just because of the lesson I think they learned with like all the lore stuff with like the, you gotta watch the game and, mm. and, and all that. Um, and I think the only, because again, the Matrix is... I don't know. It's the weird blessing and curse. The first one, I love it because of the ideas. And then the second one, I was like, there's too many ideas, um, which is so dumb and weird. You know what's interesting, though? Like, like, especially with the Animatrix and the comics and the games, had that happened now and not 10, 15 years ago? I would be shitting our pants just, over if, it. If they were just like, oh, Matrix is getting an animated series on Warner Brothers streaming, we'd be all over it. We'd but be back doing, then we're like, boo. We'd be doing a, a cram it on, <laughs> right. like, here's what you needed to know from the Matrix comics right. for, the, for Reloaded or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd be, everybody would be eating it up. It was just ahead um, of its time in that sense. It really, it really was. I love the Wachowskis. They, someday we're going to look back and be like, bees can sense royalty. Uh, <laughs> they, they were brilliant. Um, uh, oh, what was it? Oh, so I, I really think the only, A, they have to have something to say. Um, the Wachowskis have to do it or at least produce it. Or, or something, you know, maybe, like, what if Boots Riley did did the Matrix? Oh wow, that with, would be with uh, like worked on it with like with the Wachowskis, just someone who's like, I've got some shit to say, yeah, and I can use computer generated world as a metaphor to do so. I think that that could be really interesting, um, but I think I think the reboot has to in itself be a commentary on something like 
did we reject the first Matrix trilogy, so we reset the system, and here it is. You know, I don't know. Right. Like there, there, but there has to be a purpose. There has to be some kind of commentary uh, on it, uh, even just a wink and a nod, so that we're like, oh, that's why it's rebooted. You know, cool. I accept. I, I've been given just <laughs> enough information to accept my reality that they're rebooting the Matrix, even at a near unconscious level. Yep. Yep. As yep. The architect exactly. So confusingly said. Exactly. <laughs> you know what's so great though is so I just got all the Matrix movies on 4K, and that's what kind of made me want to revisit them. And there's a behind the scenes thing, a uh, little clip of the the actor who's the architect. He's just the sweetest, most nice, <laughs> simple man. He's like, I didn't know what I was saying, but I, and I was so worried because I just was saying words and I didn't know what they meant and I didn't know how to emote. And then Keanu Reeves just put his arm on my shoulder and said, don't worry, man, we'll get through it. Like, he's so sweet. But like, it's <laughs> We're just making like, movies! The complete opposite of that character who everyone's like, man, that guy is probably just like the worst at a party. It's like, no, he's just yeah, like your yeah, sweet old grandpa sweet old with the butterscotch in his <laughs> <laughs> in his, uh, his big uh, Mr. Roger sweater. Yeah. He was so weird. He was weird. But he, look, I love it. I love Matrix Reloaded. I love Matrix, uh, the first one. I gingerly like the third one the third one well you you've made me want to at least revisit them you jerk <laughs> i'm so sorry also not sorry i think uh i think honestly if you just go to matrix reloaded and just accept it as its own kind of you know it's not trying to do something you know try sushi you might like sushi i know mm-hmm. you love the baked salmon try the sushi mm-hmm, it tastes mm-hmm. just as good in a different way uh joe Thank you for wasting time with me talking about I will existential always things. talk about the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you guys for listening. Um, a little peek behind the curtain. I'm having some uh, eye surgery done, so I have no idea if I will have an episode ready for next week. Uh, if not... Uh, the eyes uh, of the business oracle. <laughs> yeah, someone's taking my eyes. Merovingian's taking my eyes. Uh, so if there's no episode next week, I apologize. If you're listening to this months from now and there's already four episodes coming after this, well, you can just stop. <laughs> just push stop. Uh, thank you so much, and I will see you guys soon. Bye.